Thank you very much, John, and then uh, your, thank you very much for your kind the introductions. So, and then the, I'm very, I said, happy, and then I'm very honored to present, to give the uh, Kuro lectures to you. And then, the, unfortunately, and then I'm not allowed to visit the Paris, but uh, uh, I'm in the Tokyo, and then the, now I try to try to my best to make the, my presentations as much as possible. Okay. So, and then the, today I'd like to talk about some the sustainable land reclamations in the coast areas. So, and then the, I have said, prepared the several have said, subjects and then the listed in the contents. So, uh, at first I'd like to talk about the introductions and then the second is the land reclamation project and then the exemplified by the history of the land reclamations at the Tokyo Bay areas. And then after that, so and then I'd like to talk about the sustainable I say, the land reclamation techniques. One is the land improvement technology, and then the one is the natural reproduction and the beach uh, nutrition movement. And then the finally, I'd like to give you the concluding remarks. So, at first, uh, 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 when I was invited by the Kurons the lectures, and then I just uh, remembered about the Kurons, and then I learned the, such a, the, the forces that between the two charges in the high school days. Okay. And then also the I just uh, remembered, I can remember the Kurons as precious theories. So, and then uh, in, in 1773, and then the Kurons uh, the proposed the as precious theories that based on the load requirements. That about uh, 150 years later, and then the two Japanese uh, as a civil engineers, one is uh, Nagaho and Mononobe, and then the Saburo Okabe, proposed or the modified is the Kuron the theory, and then they incorporate is a seismic force that uh, drawn in that light here. Okay. So, and then the, we, or the France and then Japan, have uh, some the close relationships, right? So now, and then the, I'd like to talk about uh, some of the history of Japan and then the France exchanges. Uh, as you may know, in the Japan, was isolated, uh, had uh, some policies for the national seclusions, right? And then the Tokugawa shogunate, the Tokugawa government, uh, decide the, the national seclusions in the 1633, many, many years ago, okay? And then the in, but uh, in 1854, and then the, uh, Tokugawa shogunate have to open the, his government to the foreign countries and then the connect establish the treaty of the commerce and then the well-being treaty between Japan and then France in 1859 like that and then uh, soon after we have a sort of the, say, the civil as uh, wars or the revolutions in the 18 68. That. So the just before the revolutions, and then the French people, uh, Bernie, all right, the who was invited by the Tokugawa shogunate, and then who contribute to the constructions of the shipyard at the Yokosuka areas. And then after the, after the revolutions, and then the government changed to the Meiji government. And then the Meiji government has said, uh, invite with another French and Blunet, 
yeah? And then the who contributes the Japanese, Japan so much, and then the who operate, who established is the Tomioka Silk Mills, like that. Okay? So, and then the, this is a, just a brief a sort of the relationship between the France and then the Japan. So, uh, I'd like to how say, the, introduce the two Frenchies again. So one is a Bellamy, and then the who uh, so the, uh, work yeah, to the Edo government to construct the shipyard. And then another friend is a Brunet. So and then the, he was invited by the Meiji government and then the, he worked to establish to the Tomioka Silk Mills, like that. Uh, the Meiji government, Meiji government has uh, dispatched the several the students to the foreign countries, but the, and then the one of the one of them is a uh, Koichi Furu, Furuichi, and then the, he was dispatched to the France. And then he learned the civil engineering in the Ecole Centre in 1875 to the 1880s. And then when he came back to Japan, and then he became the first president of the Japan Society of the Civil Engineers, and then the first dean of the Engineer School of the Tokyo University. Like that. So, and. Uh, after the, how say, the civil in the wars or the revolutions, and then the, the Japanese government opened the country to the foreign countries, and then we have uh, many, many, how say, the exchange between the France and then the Japan. Okay. So now I'd like to move to the the one with the main topic is the land reclamation project. I think that, that this project, such a land reclamation project, have been promoted for many, many years. And then the one of the purpose might maybe is for the agriculture. Okay. So and then the, this figure shows the Hachirogata in Akita prefectures for the uh, rice field. And then also the land reclamation was done for the residential houses. One of the examples is a Macau and then the Kobe, I think. And then also the, this is the, for the industry purposes. Okay? So you can see the many uh, reclaimed land for the industry. And then also uh, uh, land reclamation the promoted for the port and then the airport. It's a Kansai International Airport and then the Nice Airport, like that. So uh, I'm sorry, and then this is a too detailed, but uh, uh, this figure shows the history of the land reclamations at the Tokyo Bay areas. So and then the Tokyo Bay area is a consists of the Tokyo area here, and then the Yokohama and then the Kawasaki area here, and then the Chiba area, right? So in the in the Edo government era, from the uh, in the 16th uh, century to the uh, 17th century, right? So and then the very small lockdown reclamation was that done. But after the opening countries, so and then the, the, the government changed the policies to make uh, uh, the Japan is an industrial countries. So and then the government promote the many, many houses, the land reclamation project for the residential purposes and then the industrial and then the port and airport facility like that. In the, uh, the Tokyo and uh, Yokohama areas, okay, 
So, and then the Yokohama port was firstly opened to the foreign countries. So, and then the government promote the, um, the land reclamation a little bit past earlier than the Tokyo areas. Okay. So, and then the, you can see the many land reclamation projects like that. Chiba area is the eastern part of the bay here. So, and then that almost no reclamation was done before the, nine, the World War II, like that. But after the World War II, and then the Chiba uh, government promoted to the uh, many land reclamation projects for the industry purposes and then the residential house purposes. So, and then this graph show the, I say the Tokyo area, Tokyo area, okay. So, and then this is the Imperial Palace, and then this is the Tokyo Station areas. But many years ago, and then more than 200 years ago, and then the land area is only the very limited here, and then here. So, and then the eastern part of the Tokyo is was that it claimed in the 18th uh, say sorry in 1800 to the 1900 like that okay so this graph show the detail of the tokyo area again it is the Shinagao, Shinbashi station and the Tokyo station is here. So this is yellow, right? The, the original ground, right? In the Edo eras. After that, and after the Meiji government, and then the reclaimed land was constructed the one by one, right? Like that. And then the blue lines, and then the yellow part, green part, and then the purple part, or like that. Okay. Now, and then I'd like to talk about the Yokohama area. Okay. So, as I told you uh, before, and then the Yokohama port was uh, one of the first port. Uh, open to the foreign countries, okay? So, and then the many foreigners that came to the Yokohama, and then the Yokohama area, yeah, the many of the land reclamation was done at the Yokohama area, like that. This graph shows, this figure shows that the first Japanese railroad connecting between the Tokyo and then the Yokohama, the, which was opened in 1872, like that. This is the trains. So, and then the, the, the 10 kilometers of the total is the two twenty-nine kilometers were constructed on the declaimed dike, like that, see. So, and then this figure show the similar figure to the Tokyo areas. So, and then the green area is the original ground area. So, and then after opening the countries, and then you can see the many land reclamation projects were carried out. Okay. But uh, I'd like to have the talk about the introduced the Shoichiro Asano, and then who was uh, one of the greatest, great businessman and then the entrepreneur, so and then promote, who promoted many land reclamation project as a sort of personal business, business. At the, at the, uh, Tsurumi and then the Kawasaki areas here. Okay. So, and then that in order to enhance the industries in 1913 uh, to the 1927s, okay? 
So, and then the, this figure shows the uh, Shoichiro Asano, who was the founder of the Toa Corporation, one of the contractors. Yeah, and then again, and then who promoted the reclamation project. That. So, and then this figure shows uh, how the present asset feature on the Yokohama port areas. Now, and then last, I'd like to talk about the Chiba port areas. And as I told you before, and then the Chiba area is a sort of the local town, or the local towns. So, and then the quite a limited number of the land reclamation were done before the World War II. After the World War II, so and then many land reclamations, the Urayasu or some areas yeah. were done, carried out for industrial and then the, for the residential areas. And then the Chiba and the government have a, a reorganization plans of the port facilities to develop and then improve the logistics the functions. That. So, and then you can see the current the, how say, the situations in the Chiba port areas. So, uh, as I explained about the history of the land reclamations in the Tokyo area, so, and then this the figure shows a sort of a brief the summary. So, and then the, uh, I show you the wide variety of the land reclamation project at the Tokyo areas. And then one of the promoters, and then the, the government, Edo government or the Meiji government, and then also the local government, Tokyo metropolitan government or Yokohama or the Chiba uh, the government, and then also the private organizations like the, like the Asano. And then the land reclamation was carried out for many purposes. One of the purposes is for the residential houses, develop the residential houses, and then for the industry, and then for the constructing the port, and then the airport. And then also sometimes, and the land reclamation was done for the dumping site of the waste material or the garbages. And then the materials for the field materials, okay? uh, it's, uh, it's also the variety, has uh, many varieties. One is a mountainous soils, and then one is a dredged soil, and the other is the waste and then the garbages. So I think that in, the, in, in France, and then the, yeah, I expect you have uh, many of the land reclamation project for many purposes. And then also the construction was done with several type of the material thing. So now and then the, I'd like to have said the talk about some the ground improvement technology, that which is one of the main measures. Okay. At first, and then I would like to have to talk about the how to construct the reclaim the land like that. This is a Tokyo airport, Haneda Air. So usually nowadays, and then we carry out the ground improvement of the original ground like that, and then that we construct is a sea revetment on the improved ground here. And then after that, finally, and then we pick the, the main part of the land, like that. Like that. So this the figure shows the one example to, sh to show the, how the reclaimed land was constructed. So, and then this figure shows the Kansai International Airport. So, and then the Kansai International Airport was constructed 
on the reclaimed land. Okay? So, and then the, this, you can see the first face of the island here. So, and then the, the, you can see the sea walls like that for the second face of the island. So, after constructing the sea wall like that, so, and then the, we uh, carry out is a filling inside, like that. Okay. So, uh, then we have to carry out the land reclamations. One of the essential issue is obtain the huge amount of the soil as a field material, field materials. Okay. The, this the figure shows the one examples. Uh, of the cutting the mountain and then the land reclamations. Okay. The, this figure shows the, how say, the land reclamation project carried by, the promoted by the Kobe municipal government, municipal government. Okay. And then the catchphrase at that time was the mountains go to sea. So, and then the Kobe has said municipal government promoted two projects simultaneously. One is cutting the mountains, yeah, to obtain the field materials for the reclaimed land here. Okay. And then after cutting the mountains, and then the Kobe government construct many houses here. And then also in the reclaimed land, and the Kobe government constructed many houses, residential house, and then also the port facilities. Okay. So uh, my hometown is close to the Kobe uh, city. So and then at that time, and uh, I was uh, taught that such a type of project but very nice, like uh, killing two birds with one stone. Okay. However, the recently, and uh, we are very concerned about the environmental impact, right? Then we cutting the mountains to obtain the huge amount of the soils. So some kind of case and then cutting mountains they cause the damage of the green forest like that. So nowadays, we have to minimize the cutting the mountains, and then we have to promote the beneficial use of the waste or the dredged soil to get like that. And then also, uh, when we look at the coastlines, so, and then the reclam reclamation at the coast area may change the shape of the shorelines and then affect the life of the, life of the creatures. Okay. So, and then the, we have to harness the area's natural ability to recover from the environmental impact. Okay. So, uh, now and then, uh, I would like to talk about uh, so the necessity of the ground improvement, okay? The, the, the behavior, ground behavior of the reclaimed land. There, there are two, I said, concerns about regarding to the land reclamations. One is the stability, okay? At the sea revetment. You can see, sorry. you can see that the failure of the sea development in the Korea here. So, and then the, the Korea, and then they try to construct the seawall here, but unfortunately, and then the, the stability was failed like that. But this figure shows a field test. Yeah. 
So, and then it's a sort of the vertical hazard loading test. And then when I talk about the ground settlement, okay, so and then you can see the railways here. So, and then I took the pictures of the station here, and then the station the station was supported by the long piles. So, and then the ground settlement, amount of the ground settlement are very limited. However, the railroad between the station was supported by the short piles. So, and then you can see the large ground settlement, right, the place. And then also, uh, we have another, how say, the disasters by the liquefactions. Okay. So, and then the right bottom figure shows a very well known the picture that which was taken in the Niigata earthquake in 1964. Okay. So, and then the ground, sandy ground, was liquefied to lose the bearing capacity, and then the apartment house, uh, the, the, the settle, and then the turn down, yeah, due to the lose of the bearing capacity of the ground. So, and then the geotechnical engineers, right, that is uh, in charge of the preventing these uh, disasters. So, and then the ground improvement was necessary. So I would like to introduce the several ground improvement techniques. The, one of the ground improvement techniques is a replacement method, okay? So you can see the sectional view uh, of the sea revetment on the right-hand side. So this figure, was the sectional view of the sea development in the Korea, which I show you the before. Okay. In the replacement method, so and then the original ground was excavated here, and then the, this part was backfilled with the as is, sand materials. Okay. The, the, this technique was uh, used to use in many many years ago, but uh, nowadays, and then uh, this technique was adopted. Seldom, it's not so frequent in Japan. One of the reason is the soft soil has excavated. How to deal with the soft soil? This part. And then another issue is uh, the, 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 this uh, sun layer is usually the loose conditions. So, and then we anticipate the liquefactions may occur in these areas. Okay. So, uh, I'd like to show, explain about the three has a technique, one is a sand drain method and then the PVD, prefabricated vertical drain method, and then the sand compaction pile method, and then the deep cement mixing method. At first, I'd like to show the sand drain method and then the PVD method. So, and then you can see the two figures is that uh, sand drain machine which were, uh, sorry, for the on land works and then for the marine works. So, and then the sun drain has a usually a diameter of the 0 0.4 to the 0 0.5 meter, and then the drains were installed in the ground with the interval of the about the two to three meters. But the uh, sand drain, they required some large amount of the soil as a drainage layers. okay? So if we 
how say the concern about environmental issues, like as I explained before. So, and then the one of the key issue is how to reduce the amount of the soil for the sand drain method. One of the technique is uh, uh, adopted the PVDs instead of the sand drains. So, and then the, this is a, a PVD drain machines, okay? Uh, that, as you may know, and then the PVD has a, some, a, a sort of strict a shape, and then the, the food has a width is that it generally is a, a hundred millimeter, and then the thickness is the five millimeters. And then the PVDs are installed in the ground at, with some interval of the one to the two meters, like that. And then another how the technique for reducing the sand is a horizontal drain method, like that. So, and then when we use a sand drain method and then the PVD method, so we usually construct the, we, the, so the sand mat on the original ground, okay? So in order to reduce the uh, uh, amount of the sand mat, and then also the keep the high permeability. So, and then we install the, some the horizontal process drains like that. So, and then the, the horizontal drain has also the strip, the shape, that the, uh, the widths is a, a little larger than the PVD, is about, I think, the 200 millimeter and then thickness is a five millimeters, almost the same as a PVD. But placing the interval or spacing is about the two to four meters, okay? So, and then the sand drain or the PVD method were widely used for the land reclamation project. So, and then the left-hand side show the sand drain method yeah, applied in the Kansai airport. And then the, the, the left-hand side, you can see the PVD applications in the Kita Kyushu airport. So, so in order to reduce the amount of the soil, the amount of the sand, the PVD is a preferable, preferable desirable. However, we have another as, as, as the headache problems about the PVD, okay? So PVD is just made of the plastic, plastic. So, and then the PVD was remained in the ground after the completion of the drainage functions. So, and then the, this PVD remained in the ground that sometimes cause some the technical I say the problems. Yeah. So and then I, this graph shows the one examples. Okay. So and then the, you can see the Tokyo Haneda Airport. The, the, this airport was expanded one by one, like that. The other case and then the, the, the one runway was already open, and then we now the constructing the new runway here. The together with the constructing the new runway, and then the, the railways right, system was constructed right, to that terminal building here. But this area okay, was improved by the PVD and then the sand drains. And that this is the sand drain, uh, PVD was some the, the the geo drain and then the castle drains, right? This is brown name. So and then the the shield tunnel here, right? It was used for constructing the this uh, the tunnels, but the shield tunnels have to cut the PVDs, right? 
remained in these areas. So, and then that's, that they have to have developed some new type of the shield machine with a drain cutter head like that. So and then the, I I heard, so and then the, they had a, the contractor had a very headache problem, yeah, about the cutting the PVDs like that. And also the PVD is a plastic materials, how say they may cause another how say the environmental impact, right? Not a mechanical. So and then you can see the many, many, the plastic, the waste at the coastal areas, lines, and also the sea birds, right? Accidental, uh, increasing the plastic like that. Yeah. Of course, and then the PBDs were installed in the ground, okay? So, and then I think that the PBD, I said that does not cause such an impact but the, it is a, such a the, such a potential I said, impact for the environmental by the plastic materials or PVDs. So in order to said, solve such an environmental impact, new type of the PVD was developed, named the biodegradable non-urban drains, okay? Many years ago, about 20, more than 20 uh, years ago, okay? So, and then uh, this figure show the biodegradable, the, the process. So, and then the, this figure show the PVD at the installation stages, and then after five years, six years, eight years, like that. So, and then the PVD was also degraded and then the disappeared. Like that. So, and then the thing we, uh, in the case, when we have said concern about such an environmental impact, so, and then the, it is a desirable to use this type of the PVDs. Right? Instead of the regular type of the plastic materials. Okay. Now and then the, I'd like to uh, talk about another how say the technique is a compaction techniques. One is a some compaction pile method. The this method was technique was developed in Japan, but that uh, very, very similar to the stone crown method like that. And then also, uh, I think that as you may know, that there are several types of the compaction method, and then the Bible compactions or Bible stone crowns like that. But I would like to have said today, I would like to talk about the sand compaction by method, which are very have said, common in Japan. So this that method was developed is in 1956, right? The originally, and then that they aim to improve is a sandy ground. But nowadays, that this method was applied for the sandy ground and then also the for clay ground. In the case of the application for the sandy grounds, main purpose is a density increase and then the liquefaction mitigations. The, the, the purpose for the clay ground is the bearing capacity increase or increase the slow stability and then the decrease the consolidation, the settlement. So you can see that very has it all fashioned machines yeah, in, in the at the, I say, the developing the stages like that. So this uh, I the method was applied for the on-land works and then also the marine works like that. The pile diameter was, it was ranging 
from the maybe the half meter to the 1.5 meter and then the, these uh, piles were installed in the ground with the interval of the 1.5 meter to the 4 meters and then also the replacement area ratio or improvement area ratio is the 30 to the 70 percent so this technique was applied to the Tokyo Aneda airport for the, in the construction of the fourth runways, as you can see like that. Nowadays, and then Tokyo Haneda airport has a four runways. This is a one, this is another two run, second, and the third runway, and then this is the fourth runways. So, and then you can see the cross sections of the uh, reclaimed land. So, and then you can see the sea revetment right here. And then the, this uh, revetment was supported by the improved ground by the sand compaction pile method. And then the main part here uh, was uh, supported by the sand drain improvement here for the accelerating the consolidations. Like that. So, and then you can see the, how say, the SCP vessels, the working at the site here. So now and then, the, in order to also S SCP, and then also the stone cloud method required the large amount of the sand or granular materials. Or the piles. So in order to reduce the such amount of the sand, okay, or the environmental, I say the, the protections. So and then the beneficial use of the waste materials, right, were carried out. I show you the two examples. One is the, the fly ash here. Right? So, and then this, it, uh, as the man made granule, as the granules, right? This is the granulated fly ash after mixing and then the cement and then that is clay, right? And then also the fly ash. So, you can see the ground material. And then another example is a copper slug, copper slug. So, and the copper slug is the byproduct for manufacturing the coppers. So grain size of the slug is about the five millimeters. So now and then we can we use these slug or that this uh, granulated the fly ash to the stand compaction piles. So and then the first has a technique I would like to show is the deep mixing method. So and then the deep mixing method is a so that a soil admixture stabilization technique. Yeah. By mixing the soil, original soil, with a cement or a lime like that. So and then you can see the figures, the machines for the on land for the on land works and then the marine works like that. Okay. In general, in the mas machine on the for the on land works, I said consist to has a two mixing shafts here like that, and then also you can see the mixing blade like that. So when the cement injected from the nozzles, bottom of the nozzles and then the original soil and then the injected cement is mixed by the help of the mixing the blade like that and then the similar the and then the in, for the marine works and then you can see that how say that eight how say the combined the mixing shaft like that okay so, and then the diameter of the mixing blade is about 1 to 1.3 meters, 
point for the on land works, and then the number of the mixing shafts is one to two, but usually is a two. Okay. So and then the, this method was also applied to the Haneda Airport. This this part. Okay. So and then you can see the cross sections. So this is a C development in this case is constructed with a caisson type like that. So and then this caisson was supported by the demixing improved ground like here like that. So and then I would like to talk about the one has a technique right in which is a uh, fly ash is used, beneficially used. So, and then a new type of the demixing method was developed, named FGCDM method. And then fly ash, and the gypsum, and then the cement demixing method. Okay. So, and then the usually uh, the binder of the this demixing method is the, the cement or lime. But in this, in this method, and then the binder is a mixture of the cement and then fly ash, and sometimes, and then the gypsum. Okay? So, and then we use the, how say, the fly ash as a sort of the binder. binder. So, advantage is, is a, low strength, a little bit low strength compared with the stabilized soil by the cement alone. So, and then we can install, we can penetrate the sheet piles, right, in the stabilized soil like that. So this, I said, the figure showed the cross section of improved ground. So, and then the, the green here is the original ground, and then they try to excavate it here. So, and then they construct improved ground here and here by this method for the stability problems. But and then they install the sheet piles into the improved ground like that. So now and then I'd like to show the brief summary yeah, of the ground improvement technique. Okay. So as I told you as I before, and then the general the ground improvement is necessary in the reclaimed land for the stability problem or for the ground the settlement problems, and then also the liquefaction problems. Okay. And then the instead of the excavate the replacement, the method, but the non dredged reclamation method are preferable. The, one of the reasons is the, how say, the soft soil after dredged. And then also the pollution, water pollution during the excavation. So, and then I have to introduce the three, how say, the, the method as uh, the non dredged the method. Sand drain or PVD, and then sand compaction pile method, and then the deep cement mixing method. Okay. So, and then for the, the sustainable technologies, right? So, beneficial use of the dredges, uh, the soil, or byproduct, or waste materials is necessary. necessary. And then I'd like right to introduce the several I've said, examples of the beneficial use of these uh, materials. Okay. Now, I would like to talk about uh, now uh, the field material, field materials. Okay. This is one example of the reclaimed land with a dredged soil. This is a, the part, is at Tokyo Haneda Airport by the third runways, the constructions. So, and then the, this is the, say, the reclaimed land at that time in the, here. 
Okay. So very, very wet, very, very wet. The water content is the, the exceeded more than 200 or something. And then the people right, can easily sink in the ground like that. Okay. So, and then the, in this the project that we, I would say, use the sand drain method and then the PBD method for the ground improvement, right? For increasing the stability and then for decreasing the consolidation settlement. I think that uh, there are many, I would say, the applications, yeah, in the reclaimed land with the dredged soil, not only Japan, but in the Australia or the many countries. So, and then that they use the dredged soil as a field materials, and then that they, I said, improved these soil by the PBD, like that, okay? But now, and then I'd like to talk about another type of the stabilizations, is a cement stabilizations, yeah? For the beneficial use of the dredged soil. One example is a lightweight treated soil meso. Okay. So and this is one type of the cement stabilizations. Okay. And then created create to create the lightweight and then the large strength soils. Okay. In order to achieve the large strengths, and then we use the cement as a binder. And then in order to achieve the right weight, so we mix right, the air form or EPS, expanded polystyrol beads. So, and then the, we can control the unit weight of the stabilized soil, ranging the 8 to the 13 kilonewton per cubic meters. And then the strength can be also controlled from the 200 to the 500 kPa by changing the amount of the cement. So, and then you can see the mixing plant on the bottom right, and then also you can see the placement bars on the left bottom. That. The other as a technique I'd like to show is a pneumatical flow mixing method. Okay? But this method is also the, another type of the cement stabilizations. Okay? So uh, the, the right figure shows the set of the barges. So you can see the soil transport barge and then pneumatical barge on the bottom left and then the, you can see the bind the supplier barge on the center and then also you can see the placement barge here okay now this method is, is a very unique so and then the thing we transfer the dredged soil from the the pneumatical barge to the placement barge, okay? So, and then we inject with the air pressures in the pipelines, okay? Like that. So, when we have to inject is a compressed air in the pipelines, so, and then the crates of the soil, right? The, uh, the become a sort of the plug like that, okay? So, and then the thing we inject is a binder also here. So, and then this great plug, the move to the left hand side. But at that time, in the turbulent flow, turbulent flow is a taking place, the take place in the great plug. So, this is a turbulent flow, the functions to mix the clay and then the binder very smoothly. So, and then the after uh, so the traveling, the clay plug from pneumatical barge to uh, the, the placement barge, and then we can obtain the stabilized soil with a uniform 
the strength. Okay? And then also we can control the strength ranging the 200 to the 500 kPa by changing the, by controlling the amount of the cement. So this the figure shows the one of the successful applications to the Central Japan International Airport. Okay. So and then the top right you can see the bird view of the island. Okay. And then the we the, the, you can see the numerical bars on the right and then the cement bars in the center and then the placement bars on the left. These two uh, the technique, okay, lightweight treated soil technique and then the numerical flow mixing method were applied to the Tokyo Haneda airport also. I'd like to talk about another type of the beneficial use of the byproducts, not the cement stabilizations. So, and this figure shows the calcium, we call the calcium, deforming the materials, okay? So, and the calcium is, a, how say, the steel manufacturing slug, and then which has the lime, contain the lime, and the silicon dioxide, and then iron oxide. And then it has a similar shape to the bubbles, and then also the self-hardening characteristics. So, and then the, this uh, type, the calcium, right, can be beneficial use as so the binders. So when we mix the calcium with the soil, so and then we expect that it will be the high strength of the order of the 200 kPa. So these two figures show the illustrations, right, the, for the, uh, the applications, okay? So, and then I think we place the calcium, right, just the front of the shoe revetment, right, to create is a shallow layer or a tidal flat. And then I think we apply to the soil just behind the Q uh, is a retaining wall. So the, due to the high strength, we can expect the small earth pressure acting on the retaining wall here. So and then the, this figure shows the one of the applications at the Toyo port in the Ehime prefectures. So, and then now I'd like to talk about the brief summary, okay? Uh, the, in order to reduce the amount of the soil, right, as a field material. So, and then the beneficial use of the dredged soil or byproduct or waste material, right, is necessary, necessary, okay? And then the, I, I introduce the three types Three method. One is a lightweight treated soil. One is a numerical flow mixing method. These two are the cement stabilization technique. And then the last one is the calcium. Oh, sorry, I missed that. The the materials. Okay. So now I'd like to have to talk about another the subject. Another subject is the natural deep productions and then the beach nutrition the nutrition okay so usually and then the, we carry uh, uh, land reclamation project was done carried out at the coastal areas coastal areas okay so and then the new reclaimed land has caused a change of the shorelines, shape of the shorelines, and then which may cause environmental impact, right? 
especially to the life of the creatures. Right? So, and then the, we have to perform the deformations right, of the tidal land, maybe the together. The, the growth of the coarse reef, like that, okay? like that. So as I told you before, and then many, many land pro project was done at the Co Tokyo Bay area, right? Tokyo area, Yokohama, Kawasaki area, or Ka and the Chiba areas, okay? So, and then the shape of the coastline was much the considerably changed by the land reclamations. Okay? And then the, we were anticipate about the environmental how say, the impact to the coastlines. So, and then the, together with the uh, land reclamation project and then national reproduction and then the beach nutrition the project were done at Tokyo Bay, right? So, and then you can see the such a tables, right? Of the, pro, the, the project, okay? So, and then the, according to the, fee, the table, and then the two project was done in the Chiba area, and then about the seven, the project was done at the Tokyo port, and then the two, the project, were done at the Yokohama areas. So, and then you can see the one of the example at the Jonanjima Seaside Park. So, and then you can see that this is the, how say, the sea revetment lines, okay? This is the reclaimed land. And then you can see the sand field right here, okay? This is a natural, how say, the reproduction project here. So, and then I'd like to uh, say that talk about is a one, another example at the Tokyo uh, airport. Okay. So, and then uh, this figure is uh, the bad view of the airport. Now, uh, uh, the airport consists of the four languages, namely is a language, B language, C language, and then the D language. And then the D production project was done at just the front of the C runway. Yeah, here. Here. Okay. So and then the this the figure show the cross sections of the this project. So, and the different side here is the airport. So, and then they have to construct, right? Some liminal dike here, and then also this area was filled with the sun, right? To create, right? The, the, the shallow tidal land and the tidal like here, like that. So you can see the part of the, uh, the, the tidals, the shallow tidals here. Okay. So, and then the, we have to uh, the carry out this type of the project, right? Together with the land reclamations project nowadays, right? For the, some the sustainable development of the reclam uh, land reclamation. Okay, now uh, I'd like to I'll say the move to the concluding remarks. Okay, now and then the as you know the SDGs. Okay, yeah, sustainable development goals. Yeah, was frequently announced. Okay, and then the, this goal SDGs is a collection of the seventeen interlinked global goals. Okay, so uh, I think that we can find the three has it the goals among the 17 regarding to the land reclamation project. 
One is the number nine in the industry, the innovation, and then the infrastructures. Okay. For this category, I think that we have said that have to promote the beneficial use, right, of the byproduct or the construction waste. Eleventh, in the sustainable cities and the communities, right? The ground improvement method to improve the ground stability and then reduce ground settlement and then prevent the liquefactions. That. And the last one is the number 14, life below the water, okay? So non dredged ground improvement method is necessary, I think. So, now I have said a talk about the several type of the beneficial use of the byproduct or the some of the materials. The, this the figure shows the sort of the summary of the some of the material which was already used, beneficial use in the ground improvement or the land reclamations. Okay. One is the dredge soil, as already showed, top, concrete, debris slag, grass, debris, and surface soil, and then the paper slash, waste tires, fly ash, slash, and wood chip, and then sometimes we use oyster shells, and then the inclination ashes, like that, yeah. So I don't know the, your situations about the oyster shells. I know that the French people have like uh, oysters so much. So, and then I'm a little bit afraid. So, and then you may have a, a little bit of headache problem, how to deal with the oyster shell after eating. But uh, in Japan, we have a similar, how they the headache problems, but uh, now and then we use the oyster shells as a, as a sand compaction pile material like that. So, and then for the sustainable, for achieve the sustainable land reclamations, and then I think we have to promote such a beneficial use of such a material huh? more and more. Okay? And then also we have to develop the new type of the ground improvement technique or the, any type of the technique for I say the promoting the land reclamation and then also to minimize the environmental impact like that. Okay? Okay. Thank you very much for your kind attentions. And I yeah, I'm very happy to give the this lecture to you. Thank you very much again.